How's it going, bird? In group therapy, this is Rock. Sorry this took so long to get out. Lots of real life happening. But I'm doing your VOD review from a scrim that you did the other week versus it looks like uh, Fountain Snipers again. And so, um, yeah, we'll check in on Dragonshire here. Dragonshire is one of my favorites. Be intrigued to see how you guys play this one. Dragonshire typically um, is played in a 1 3 1 fashion by like all levels of play. I know it can be difficult to do 1-3-1 one, one a lot of the time as you guys are having to work through different communications and different things that go with it. So I'll be intrigued to see here how you do that. Um, the other thing to be looking for, good attempts there. The other things to be looking for when you play this map is to, again, always identify what your win condition is and what the enemy team's win condition is. And so as we're looking here and stacking up and starting, um, our win condition is pretty clear. We want to get rotational picks with Varian. Right, so it's like so that's pretty much we are only going to get kills um, from Varian, or we're going to be getting kills from what we would call an all-in play, where Dehaka is in, we use Junkrat's um, Riptire, and we're going to get a kill that way. So those are all good things, but just being able to recognize that's how we get kills, that's how we win this match, is from those picks, from those aggressive um, one on um, isolated picks, compared to the enemy team. The enemy team is definitely all in. And so when I say all in, it doesn't have to be a wombo combo. But if you look at what they're setting up here, they're looking at Blessed Shield. They're looking at potentially an arrow or a mind control that's coming off of that. And in Tomb, they have all the things are going to be thrown out at once, right? So they're all pushing R. Um, Joe really only is an all in tank or a like wall, like so you can say poke tank, because Joe doesn't have. A, any reliable engages on a short cooldown. It's pretty much Blessed Shield. So your team really shouldn't die early game here unless we're just flat out overextended because you see where Joe is. If you see Joe is, you shouldn't get condemned. There's no real threat early game from Joe. You can just kind of attack Joe. So just be aware. Um, yeah, I think that kind of talks about it. It looks like from their team, they're running more of a traditional um, four uh, you guys are also running kind of a four man, maybe it's just because you're waiting for Varian to hit four. But they definitely don't are not built for a one three one. They didn't pick um, what I would call an anchor hero. So a one three one, you would typically have a three man that's running um, from the middle lane and then looking for advantageous fights all around. This is a great setup. Oh my gosh, you guys didn't get the kill. It's a uh, part of possibly a Tassadar thing. Let's uh, go ahead and just double check real quick what our damage structure was, because that was a great taunt and everything there. Test is W build. Okay. Um, you pull them down into the bush. Once we have taunt, do we have buttons up for this taunt? Okay, we're hitting taunt here. We don't have... We don't have W up right away. So, potentially there we gotta make sure we throw W first before we AA. But it doesn't really matter. You guys don't have burst um, since it's W build tasks. Um, if it's Q build task, you can do a little bit more. I think Lysina's follow up was there. The trap was a good initiation and everything. Um, I don't know if it's worth screwing up your stuff, but if you've already seen that Tass has thrown Q, don't be afraid to just blow the bomb during the taunt duration because you might run into a spot where you're not able to secure the kill, but blowing Joe into the towers will help you guys get a kill. Um, the other reason you didn't get a kill here, almost 100% reason I can say you didn't get a kill, is you're the wrong level 1 here, bird. So. Okay. Oh, so you didn't throw a bomb, you threw a trap. Did you not have bomb? Um, either you didn't have bomb, or bomb was already blown up. Oh no, bomb's up here. I see it now. Yeah. So, this kill happens if you have the other level 1 bird. So, um... When you're playing your Varian for pick, I understand you're like, oh, I'm into blinds. I probably won't get to AA much. But um, your overpower does 40% more damage, and it's guaranteed to proc during a taunt, right? Especially if you're going to be taunting and trying to blow up Joe. So 40% more damage here. So your level 1 does 146 bonus damage. So it's like, so 40% more would get you pretty much up to like 200 damage. So how much health did she, did Joe have before the Unstoppable came out?
Okay, so the first one here would have done 200 damage instead of 146. Then the second one here that you just taunted from would have been an additional 200 damage. Oh, okay. Maybe not. It would have been really close. But yeah, so there is definitely an additional damage there that could have been done to put that pressure on for a potential kill. And then if we synced up our other abilities, maybe Joe dies there. So. But yeah. Um, so as we as I was saying, so for a one three one type style for this matchup, um, your team could leave Junkrat bottom to anchor the lane and allow the three man of Varian, Tassadar, and um, Anduin to go run and get kills. And so it looks like instead we're playing this as a four four one, which is fine. Um, like I said, the one three one is a little more difficult to play, especially as you guys are starting out and learning as a team. Um, and, uh, so you see that they're middle, so you guys are trying to find emphasis on bottom, which is good. Joe sees it now, so good boop. Um, I think she's going to teleport over. She should die for that. Good job. Good punish. Way to provide good vision bird and stay on top of what they were doing there, so that way your team could take the camp. Um, so top will need help. Dahaka can't really clear that by himself without losing the wall. But you guys are helping your push down here, so this is probably fine. So you're trading wall for wall. Okay, we hit sevens. Can we get a taunt here? That's a good taunt. That's good damage. Yeah. We're kind of missing... Usually variant comps want um, some sort of burst because you want to be able to get a kill during the duration of your taunt and so if you're not really able to do that it's going to make things very hard so here taunting deckard right like he's a support he's out of position and the wall comes out this all looks good obviously the bigger thing is to watch our own team's positioning on what we're able to fight and what we're able to hit mac mac can hit your target but mac mac also is in you know free free hit version of dagny here and so Mac Mac probably didn't notice or didn't realize you're getting hit so hard because Magni could have ran up and away. Like, sure, Joe's here, but if you would have ran up to out of the triangle, you might have been able to live. But, but yeah, that's just a mixture of, like, you know, we're, we're kind of split in our fight and our engage. So if we're looking to taunt from bottom south, making sure that, you know, the variant is the one in the bush and the team is on the safe side, or we're all four fighting from the bottom safe side of the bush. Because if we're going to be split like that, then yes, you know, we can potentially get hit or picked off. But, like I said, you guys kind of are lacking in the burst department for this variant. We'll have to see um, how that plays out as we go further. So junk coverage or middle this time, so that way Dahaka can fight for the point. Uh, junk can try and stall middle... I don't know if Junk can actually stall middle. I see there's a, they're still channeling. Okay, so now it's 2v2. So, okay, so now it's 3v3. So, you guys kind of, sort of, need to, I'll say pick one. But Dragonshire, it's funny. The reason the 131 and some of the other strategies work on this map is because you can't get the dragon unless you control all three points. You might be saying to yourself, Rock, there's only two points. But in reality, if you control both of these and you have three people middle, they will never cap this unless they also send three to four people middle. And so if they send three to four people middle, then one of your two offlaners should have the opportunity to step up or you guys can fight uh, proactively. And so it looks like that as they had put two, you know, junk can stall a little bit with us, the grenades and the bombs and things. But we ended up having to send Tassadar up and Dahaka up. So if we're sending that many people up here to fight, it really should be a full fight to make sure that we secure a kill or secure the shrine, right? And then once we get our kill, we can kind of fan back out and put our junk rat back in the bottom or Dahaka go bottom and then dig top or whatever. But like I said, you can see Dahaka uh, dug in. Oh, no, Dahaka didn't dig any walk down. So let's watch middle for a second. Because I was busy watching there. Oops. So let's go ahead and watch here. So now that we know that the dragon's being capped, Mac is slowing it down. Right, you're going to blow up the bomb. 
Oh, that's how that's how Savannah's got over to the dock. I was wondering. So, right. So we're covering it. We're covering it. We're covering it. We're checking it. We're covering it. So, like I said, we're spending a lot of time and resources here. And like the one person that really can't do anything by himself is Varian. And so we've got Varian down here trying to clear a wave by himself. Okay, good. We are switching it up. As I said, I'm like, it's good that Dahaka was able to take top briefly, but we really don't want Varian to be... Oh, this is a dangerous rotation. Oh, Blessed Shield missed. Okay, looks like you'll live. Or maybe not. Nope, you all die. Oh, I seen a... OP, OP, OP. Almost saved them both. So, Yeah. It just comes back to that idea of, like, if you've got the macro control and the things that are available, you're able to do so much more than getting stuck with this different um, positioning. So just do your best to make sure that you're able to get everything that you want. So, okay. So they got a kill, so this should enable them to push or get the dragon. Good boops. Uh, this is a little dangerous. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay, you lived. Just... As much as you want to stall or stop a dragon, right? Like, we don't want to give them more. And so we already had to lose Dahaka top to try and slow down things. And so as much as giving up a dragon hurts, we have to also understand what our win condition is. And we won't be able to get kills, really, unless we get a cheeky junk rat bomb over the wall or we have a taunt. So we can't, like, force how some of those things are going to work. Uh, interesting Deckard idea. He tried. Okay, so Dragon's going to Siege. Someone needs to answer Dragon. Um, see, that's a kill. Yeah, overextended into the wall. Well done. So, that's fine. You can kill this Joe, too. Yeah, let's kill Joe. Oh, almost. Yeah, I'm guessing we didn't have Taunt or didn't think we'd be able to do it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'd rip tire for the Dragon. The Dragon's not that scary. Taunt. The route was a little late. Maybe we didn't communicate that or we were in position for that. So again, they want to force these fights because they have the R's that take full team fights. We want isolated picks. So, unfortunately... Oh! Hey, we live. Well done. Uh, sure, they get the camp. They threw all their R's. Oh, maybe they don't get the camp. Hey, well done, cheeky cheeky. I like it. So, pretty silly of her to step on the camp without having her ult or her D. So, okay, looks like we're still trying to recover here. So, with our advantage, we're not gonna be able to do much. We're just gonna be able to bring the map back to where we want to be. We're looking at doing the camp to push our advantage. I like it. Uh, make sure that trap's fully in the bush so you get vision of the bush. Because right now you don't have vision of the bush. But if the trap's fully in the bush, you would have vision of it. Um, did you take CDR on yourself? No, you're just having fun. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're just having fun. Okay, you don't have the CDR talent yet, Mac. So I would have been looking to put that bomb here to make sure that we can get a kill. Um, oh, with the wall. That was cheeky. I liked it. Looking for a kill here. So you got him to blow shield, blow stuff. This is a chaotic fight. Tass is doing work. Yeah, way to go, Tass. Taunt here. Uh, just not on cooldown. All right, we got our advantage. We need to do something with it now. So what are we doing? Are we looking for the dragon or are we looking for kills? We're looking for kills. But Varian was down here taunting. Okay, how did we get split there? Right, we really should be on top of whatever Varian's doing. Because he's going to be engaging for us. So, right here, Bird sees Deckard. But I'm guessing nobody else heard or no one else saw Deckard. So we need to work on our communication there if we were looking to kill the Joe or if we were looking to kill the Deckard. Good job. So, just something to be aware of. You know what I mean? Like, I don't... I, like, we, we get, end up getting both of these kills. Oh. Maybe not. Oh, ho, ho, the tire died. Yeah. Okay. Well, good job, Dahaka. Way to get a kill. This is our chance for the dragon. So, Dahaka's got to kill top. And we just got to kill mid. 
This should be dragon, dragon, dragon. Why are we running bottom? We need this dragon. Like, we need to be able to come back in this game. This is our chance. Dahaka needs to be walking immediately to the top point, and you four should be still here watching for his top rotation to make sure he doesn't get ganked when he takes the point. Like, coming bottom doesn't means that we're giving the dragon. Your guys' siege is actually very poor. Oh, man. Okay. Just always look for what's the the biggest thing we can do with our advantage. Like, I'm going to go back and look at the exact amount of time that you had. Okay. So, at worst, you have 20 seconds to get this dragon. I 100% think if someone calls and tells Dahaka, go to the point, you four know where at least three of their players are. You know Jaina's here, you know Deckard's here, and I think you know Sylvanas is here. Right? So you know all three are mid. So if you want Dahaka to go get the dragon, right, you put bird or or uh you put bird and anduin like here i say bird but varian and anduin can come up to here right the worst dragon person the most gankable person during the dragon would be tassadar so tassadar can kind of hang out here once the wave's cleared and junk can kind of roam where he is either supporting the mid siege or covering bottom if someone comes bottom right you've got traps you've got bombs to secure that dragon Dahaka do, does have dig. So if for some reason Dahaka comes top and takes the point and Sylvanas tries to cheek this by like blinking over your trap and getting on the point, Dahaka digs down and you guys kill Sylvanas. Like you guys, this is your dragon. I, I'm quite sad that, that you ended up giving the objective here at, for tw after you had 20 seconds. You even see Sylvanas middle. So you knew that you had the advantage there. So instead, we looked for another kill instead of pushing our advantage. Like, it's not bad to look for kills. Just remember what we're trying to do. I wonder why you're... Oh, it's because I'm a different character. I was like, what the heck is going on? So. So instead, we overstay. Oh my gosh. Another save the day from Lysina. There's a light bomb. Are we able to fight this? Are we running? All right. We live. I wish the beam of light would go away. Okay. So, we just used all of our buttons to live here. Right? Junkrat still has tire in a couple seconds. So, if we just used all of our buttons to live, do we want to force a fight? Right? We know that they used um, shield, and we know that they used mind control, and we saw that they used ring. So, we don't necessarily want a full 5v5, but we do want a quick kill. So if someone overextends, like I see the Savannah is pushing up a little bit. If we can get a quick kill, then we can push in and fight them again. But we don't want to potentially engage on Arco based on where people are positioned right now. There's going to be no follow-up damage and no follow-up CC. Yeah, we were just a little too aggressive there. Like, I saw it too. But, like, just may pay attention where your DPS is, as well as what you're controlling and what you can see. Right here. Shield throw. Shatter throw. Oh, you had a kill there on the Arco. Okay. Just remember that shatter throw, right, like... It removes the shield from Joe, so it makes the unstoppable not good. So, if Joe is overstepping because of the shield ability... So, right here. As soon as you see Unstop popped, and she's in the middle of your team, this is Shatter Throw Taunt. Even if you don't kill her, that's going to put so much pressure on the Joe, and the minions are all going to start hitting Joe. Right? Because the shield... It says 5,000 health, so the shield is giving her that additional chunk of health, right? Let's say 2,000 health. She's only at 3,000 health, but the shield bumps it up to 5k. So if you can shatter throw, or is that actual health she actually has? I don't know. No, that's how much health she actually has. Okay. Right, so if you shatter throw there and are able to remove that shield, you have a chance to get a kill here. 
because then the root can come out earlier and we can like focus our attacks on her. She still dies, so you know, it worked out. But just make sure you use that shatter throw button cuz the whole reason that you took it. It's probably the whole reason you picked Joe. Oh my gosh, no. Okay. Let's quickly look. Okay, we got our kill. Okay. We're both low. Low-ish, right? Who needs to walk on this point? So you just have a kill. Taunt is up. Do you have cooldowns to look for another kill with your taunt? If you do, Varian should be up here looking for another taunt. If you're calling point, 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 who should be on the point? Only one person. Even if it's Junkrat, that's fine, but only one. Because as soon as you both go on the point, you both get hit by the blizzard. Right? And then on top of that, we're all clumping into the blizzard. Like, there's no reason for us all to be here. You only need one person on this point, And we've given up vision control on this side. So in my opinion, if the call is point, this is Varian walking on the point and Junkrat hanging out over here, controlling the lane and the vision and the flank. Because what if Junkrat was able to, instead of being rooted here and panicking for his life, what if Junkrat could just throw the bomb right here on Silver Jackal and boop, now Silver Jackal dies instead of us dying. So, yeah, now we have to, we have to give now. Despite that it's four versus four, we have to give. Okay. Yep, you get a kill here. Well done. Okay, yep, Sylvs can push the building. Doc's got top. So we're safe. Alright. Are we. Ooh! Okay. I don't even know if you saw that because it was on 10 times speed. We just blind checked that bush. Bigger blizzard range always throws me off. I'm like, who takes that talent? Okay, right here. We don't know where they are. Leo is watching us. If Leo is watching us, they want to fight us, right? Leo shouldn't be anywhere near us if he's supposed to be soaking and doing other things, right? Yes, he wants to come back faster by, like, leeching life off of someone, but he shouldn't be here. He should be leeching life up here off to Haka if his goal is to soak. The fact that Leo is down here means that he wants to fight. That means their team wants to fight. So we need to be aware. No one has checked this bush yet. We just cleared the wave. Someone needs to check this bush. Whether it be Bird with a Q or Junkrat with a, Q, with a grenade. But we literally walked into the bush and a Blessed Shield just missed. Like, that would have been absolutely terrible to get Blessed Shielded there and hit the Junkrat. Because it would have hit Bird and hit Junkrat. And then you've got the follow-up damage on top of it. Save that explosion for uh, Arco. That's a good dig from Uga. I'm glad you guys communicated that. Did you guys get a kill here? Oh, there you go. Well done. Another, I don't think you have another kill here unless Arco doesn't have shield. There's an Entomb. That's a good tongue. Well done. A little bit chaotic, but we're making it work. Okay, so we got two kills again. Dragon's up. Let's get our dragon. Let's take our stuff. Right? As much as we'd like to knock down this building, we don't have siege. Uga already had to dig down here, so Uga doesn't have dig. So either Uga's running mid while you guys keep them here and like soft siege, or whoever's the most gankable person needs to be in the dragon. So I would say either Tassadar or Uga needs to go to the dragon. Okay. All right, so now pay attention. Okay, our dragon is not here. Yes, they are low. Leo's about to res as well. 
Oh, Bird's over here. Oh, my gosh. Okay, how did Bird get over there? Oh, Bird got tornadoed and then started seeing Limpico. Oh, Blessed Shield got used, too. Taunts used. So our team's nowhere near what you're doing there, which is okay, right? Like, if you're, if you're just putting pressure, you can just put pressure. But, like, if you're getting kills, we're looking for kills. Um... We get both buildings here. Yeah, we don't have any damage for the shatter throw at this point, but that was a good, sh a good idea. Oh, Decker got kicked. Uh, we might not be able to get Deckard. We're gonna still chase it because you're chasing the Deckard by yourself right now, Bird. You found him, and yeah, unfortunate. And then you didn't taunt because you didn't see anyone in range, but Maka was ready and threw the jump rip tire. So that's unfortunate. So make sure we're working together on whatever the target is. If you actually did want that Dahaka or that Deckard, you guys need to run to it together. So, okay, we're looking at the camp. We warn that they're there. They're two mid, so they're probably not in this camp, so it's safe. Yeah, they're in that bush. You gotta be careful. We saw at least two. All right, hold on. Okay. So, watch our engagement angle slash line. Okay. So, we know they are there. They're in the triangle somewhere. Left or right, we don't know. Correct? We don't know anything right now. The only thing we know is that they're in the triangle. Okay. Okay. If they're in the triangle and we're looking to fight them, which we are literally a sliver away from 20, right? So if we're looking to fight them, we should wait five seconds. Get 20s. Don't don't take this fight, right? You can walk. Like, they're probably trying to force and engage pre-20 because they don't have 20s. So they want to fight you. This is not a favorable fight. We found all the vision. We know where they are. There's probably all five players in this triangle right now. We don't want to take this fight. Let's get 20. And remember, we want isolated picks. We're playing Varian. If you have, like, ETC or something, sure. Slide and five-man mosh. Go for it. But, like, we're playing isolated picks. Single target kills. We don't want to be in chokes where they can just push all their R buttons. Then on top of that, so first off, I don't think you should fight here. You should get 20s. Okay. Second, if they're trying to force a fight, they're probably coming this way to or towards this camp because they probably think that's where we're going. Okay. So with that in mind, Bird is communicating, at least via pings, he's coming to this bush. Okay. Our team goes right. So we are not on the same page here. Like, I know auto-pathing is a thing, but we've got to pay attention on which side of this triangle do we want to be. Because right now, this is a Blessed Shield ring combo, and probably Tassadar and uh, and uh, Anduin die here. Yeah. And the sad part is that we walked into that. We had no business being there. Right? We literally are an inch away from 20s. We know they're running at us. We know that they're good in chokes and want to throw all their R buttons. And we walked at them. Right? Play to your win condition. You guys are winning this game. Like, yes, your structures are kind of soft, so they may be a little bit ahead, but, like, you're up on experience, you're up on kills, your team's doing what your team's good at, and then you just said, let's go fight them 5v5, which is what our team is not good at. So as soon as you saw that they were in the triangle here, this should be, don't fight, let's get 20s. This should be, Dahaka, be safe, they're in the bush. You guys should be running back this way and looking at your camp from this bush, or coming all the way around up here to get 20s, right? Like, do something that gets you 20s, 
without overextending. Okay. So I guess we'll just quickly look at the fight again to see if anything significant changed. Because the shield hit, ring hits, light bomb hits. So you're trying your best to hold things down here. But Junk can't get in. Junk can't do much. Junk doesn't have ult, right? Because we used our ult earlier um, on the target that we didn't get a kill. So Junk's trying from over the wall. The Hakka's just being an annoying dinosaur, but there's nothing they can do there. And then Varian runs away because no one was hitting Varian. So that's unfortunate. Okay. Let's see, how do we recover? So, they should be able to push a lot because they have Sylvanas. So here it comes. That's a good junk tire. You got the CDR one, so you should have it back up again. So we're clearing what's safe. Oh boy. That looks like a kill to me. A Tassadar wall in front of a building. Okay. Level 20 electric fence task, my favorite. Okay. So this wall hits. There's a lot of damage here. Where's the taunt? Both of them hit unstoppable. So you weren't able to taunt. You got shielded and condemned. And then the... Sh oh, man. That is so unfortunate. Okay. So... I don't know if you can do anything there. I That should have been a kill. Um, obviously, the optimal play is Shattered Throw into, into Taunt. But Shattered Throw, I don't think, was up. Oh, no, it was up. When did you... Oh, you used Shattered Throw here? What did you use it on? Yeah, so you accidentally used Shattered Throw there, or you threw it poorly. So, yeah, uh, th this is just, it just, it just missed. So, feel free to practice your Shattered Throw. Because, yes, it does damage, but obviously the goal is it does 33,000 damage to shields. So, yeah, like, if you had your Shattered Throw here... When this happens, you should be targeting Joe. You see the shat you see the shattered. Like it's three thousand health. So you see that the D is out. This should be shattered throw kill Joe. Because Joe no longer can run away. Joe will be the only thing in target range. Joe is forced to auto attack you because you're taunting it, which means the tower will trigger onto Joe and minus armor gets applied. That's so unfortunate. That was definitely a kill. And because of that, we've used Archon now. And so now we don't have Archon for the next fight. So that's a good looking thing. And they get the dragon. Yeah, that was our chance. That was our moment. So unfortunately, they probably win here just because dragon. Oh, they put Joe in the dragon, actually. Okay, you guys have a good opportunity to get a kill here. Watch out for Entomb and Mind Control. Right? So if you can get one of the squishies, um, you have a great opportunity to get a kill here. There's the Mind Control. Dagny's almost dead. There's the Light Bomb. Oh, Silencing Entomb doesn't really matter. Oh, the hawk is just so low. That's unfortunate. Like, you guys, I think, maybe called Dragon. Because, like, the hawk was on an island there. Okay, so we're looking at the Sylvanas. You have movement speed banner. Where's your movement speed banner? If you're looking to fight here, there needs to be a movement speed banner out. Yeah. I don't know where your movement speed banner is, but that needs to happen. If you're going to... Like, well, I, I, spell power would have probably been better here to help you with get burst kills, but movement speed for your immobile Tassadar and stuff makes sense to me. But, like, that movement speed banner needed to happen earlier so you could get those extra attacks on the Sylvanas before uh, the Entomb comes out. Because the Entomb hits, Ice Wall hits, the Hawk is just getting wrecked. And so at this point here... There should be a call either back 
or or dive. Varian's calling back. Dahak is going in, and so Dahak just gets wrecked. So, uh, did Dahak take tunneling claws? Uh, I don't see tunneling claws. I know Dahak is dead, but can I at least see? No, we didn't take tunneling claws. We took drag range. Um, I like drag range. I also like tunneling claws. This is effectively lets you like be deep and get away. You can also have dug underneath the uh, Lornado that was there that was trying to hold you down. And so instead of just dodging skill shots with your dig, your dig now becomes a movement skill. And it can also help you set up kills because you took um, Lurker Strain at four, which knocks people back. So you could like dig in and then knock back and get on the other side of them. Or you can dig in and tongue to get that extra range or whatever. So, yeah, I, I think I would have seen that instead. So, either way, oh well. Okay, so lost on an island. Uh, Dragon's probably going to be able to end here now, now that we're down one. Oh, Tass was on the wrong side, didn't move for the kick. They're going to turn and try and kill you. Nope, they're just going to try and end. So, mind control missed, good juke. Tass is super island, that's okay. Right. So they actually shouldn't be able to end here unless unless you guys give them a free kill. Like as long as you don't get oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. Okay, dragon's dead. Right? We see the middle. Where do we need to be? Like, as a team, where do we go? Where do we need to be? We don't want to get Entombed, and we don't want to get Blessed Shield. Blessed Shield's up because Joe just came out of the dragon and hasn't used it. And Entomb is still on cooldown, even if you didn't see the internal timer. But it should still be on cooldown because it was used during the fight. So Entomb will be up soon. Blessed Shield is up. And, of course, Mind Control's up. So what we need to do is stay behind our walls and slow this game down. Right? We don't want them to have a chance to win. So right here, I think you're right. We need to watch out for this bush because we don't see them, right? But because we don't see them, we also can't play in our own base, right? Like, we need to be rotating the back way around. We had no vision of them coming in on this engage. And so, unfortunately, that's just a deleted Anduin. There's literally nothing you can do there. Yep, GG. So, I think, like I said, I think this game truly had two turning points. One... The very first dragon I was telling you about, that we got two kills here between... We got one kill mid on Joe and one kill top on Leo. And we had a free dragon that we didn't take. And then the second one is that 20 fight. Like, you literally were a sliver of life from 20, and you guys would win this. And then you took a fight here, you didn't need the force. Their 20 spike is so much stronger than yours. Right? Between the free mind controls on a 10 second cooldown, potentially the more NATOs, the silencing in tomb... You know what I mean? Like, they have so many stronger late-game 20s. You guys needed to win this game before 20. Not that infinite Archon... Or, sorry, you didn't take infinite. You took the walls. I like walls. Not that you guys don't have good 20s. Theirs are better. So, in my mind, you clean up those two things, and this game is probably won before 20. Or, if, it not, if not won before 20, you are in a spot where you can push your advantage despite that they're 20. Because you had... You had a dragon here, that one time there, that would have been able to knock down these walls. So then when you got your second dragon, you could have actually talk, took out a keep instead of getting uh, both of these structures. You could have had one of these softened and then pushed for the keep. So And then you would have been 20s to where when you fought in this triangle, you don't fight there. So, yeah, overall not a bad game. Good game for review. I think the big picture to me, if you're going to run a Varian comp, Varian needs burst. And if you don't take burst, you need enough CC to where you're guaranteed to kill something during the taunt duration and the follow-up. So um, I don't mind Tassadar. I think Tassadar is a very good hero. Um, going the W build does not guarantee burst. Like Having the wall definitely helps because it means that you can attack them longer. So this can work. 
just in general, people tend to do burst things with Varian, which is maybe why they took the Jaina from you. Right? Or even the Sylvanas, you can taunt, <laughs> and then once the taunt's about to expire, you throw mind control, and that person just literally can't play the game for, like, five seconds. So, um, yeah. So let's quickly look at talents, and then we'll go from there. Uh, Varian, I still think that this should be um, the AA level 1, even though it's blinds. This should be AA level 1. Um, Victory Rush, that's correct, because you have monsters. Shield Wall, um, yeah, that's correct, because it's the only way you die is if you get Womboed. Shattering Throw is correct. Work on your Shattering Throw usage. I don't believe I saw Shattering Throw being used in any way that helped net a kill onto Joanna. And so that's the main reason you take this talent, is to kill Joanna. So make sure your team is ready and you blow her up. Uh, movement speed is cool and all. I personally would have probably gone spell power here to help with your healing and to help with um, your burst. But movement speed is good for the immobile Tassadar slash Archon. So. And then you took the right talent there. Um, I would have liked Q-Build on one here. Like, I take this talent when I'm double soaking on Tassadar. Right? So, like, if I'm playing on uh, Spider Queen and I'm responsible for the wave clear, I would have taken the W talent here. But since we were playing 4 versus 4, and you're planning on 4 manning instead of double soaking, I would have taken the Q talents here for this one. This is correct. Um, this is great. This is super fun. Um, and then you just took all the Storm talents because that's what you went. So that's fine. Uh, I would have gone Q this game. Okay. Uh, agility uh, is good. You can hopefully outrun, outrotate the Leo. This is correct. This is correct. Yeah, I think the only thing I would have done differently is um what is that on that tier besides slows does anyone else on your team have armor reduction i don't think anyone else has armor reduction okay you do so tastadar has armor reduction it's physical armor, though. Is yours physical armor, or is it all armor? 10 armor. Okay. No, okay. So you probably don't need that. My first thought was that you want armor reduction because you're a pick comp, and no one on your team has armor reduction, but Tassadar did take armor reduction. So I guess this is fine. Um, more damage obviously helps you get a kill. So I'm okay with that. Um, I, did, I do like Tunneling Claws here. In this particular... Oops. In this particular game, I think Tunneling Claws um, would have done you well. Just, just so that way you can get out of dodge. Like, not only do you dodge an ability, you can run away from the circle or run away from the triangle or run away from the entomb. All of those things can be done and get you to safety instead of just dodging an attack or an ability. Um, I don't know if you needed the range. I didn't watch um, you specifically to see how many more kills you got because of the increased range. But the tongue range is pretty long already. Especially if you pair it with a slow or something, you usually can land it. Um, and then you want attacks. Grant Essence. Is that because you were already dead? Because they were grouping pretty hard for a Contagion. Like, this could have been good to shut down some of their abilities if you hit the AoE version. Like, I take this Essence talent when um, I'm AA Dahaka, right? Which we didn't take AAs here. And then AA Dahaka is also kind of hard because they're Joe, and so you'll be fighting into blinds. So I probably would have taken the Contagion here. Um, or Apex Predator if you knew that you were going to be needed to like stop dragons or get dragons by yourself. Just being the only global in the game, having additional globals can be big. So um, I don't like this one this game just because you have blinds. And if you're that far behind on your essence... Um, getting a few more AAs is not going to um, get you back healthy enough. So, um, Anduin played excellent this game. So, I don't have tons of um, comments for Anduin. Lysina did great, as always. Um, I will make a quick note. Someone was doing the math the other day on um, Anduin's level 1s, and mathematically speaking, Lightwell does more healing as a level 1 talent and it can be used super effectively to be able to um, be 
put in a new location. So you can put it on someone and they can get healing with you have not having to be there. So whether it be you dropping it near like a camp, so that way the person who's taking the camp can get healed while they're doing the camp, or you drop it in the middle lane so when Dahaka runs down he can get healing, you put it in the bush, so that way your team walking through the bush and on the point can constantly get healing as they're fighting in a zone. Um, Lightwell's super strong. If you've never played with it, take a look. Um, it mathematically does more healing. Um, this one does more healing in a burst situation, um, but obviously it also forces you to play a mini game that potentially you don't want to play, right? Because then you're forced to heal targets that maybe you don't want to heal. Um, and then if you're forcing a target on the same target that you don't want to heal, it's like you're playing without a talent. So something to think about. Um, Piercing Light I think is fun. Obviously um, they don't have tons of melee, so um, you got you didn't finish your quest. So I would say it wasn't worth, just because you don't necessarily need it to pierce, right? Like, um, you increase spell power by one, which is not amazing. Um, the other two are, are probably better for attack and healing, right? This one gives you more attack range and helps with your burst. And this one empowers your auto attacks and gets you mana back. So I would have probably taken one of these two. Um, if they had more bodies or they had more linear engages, I'd see Piercing Light as being really good. But I don't. I didn't see it do a lot. Um, I love Desperate Prayer, so just make sure you use it wise. I felt like your pulls and stuff were on target, so I'm not too worried about that. Light Bomb's good. Um, I don't know about this one. I think maybe I talked about it last time, too, where um, you get more movement speed yourself, but in Leo, obviously, you want more pulls, which is what you took more pulls. Um, I don't know how much people got healed or if you saved people's lives post 13 by the heal on the pull saving someone compared to having movement speed and um, the allied heal um, reducing cooldown on W. So I think it was fun. I think this is a good talent um, with the way you were playing it. And since you took Q here and not W's on these ones, then this is probably fine. But just take a note for yourself if you feel like you got a bonus from the healing. So, um, all right. And then last thing, let's look at Junkrat. So um, I think Junkrat, extra round's fine. And you went trap build. I agree with traps. Trap, trap, trap. Um, I don't know if you need spread volley. Um, I guess it helps with your burst. Sure, that's fine. Helps with your burst and your clear. Yeah, I guess it's okay. I would have to do a bigger review to see if you got enough value out of it compared to just having endless nades because then obviously you have nades on nades on nades and it's just you know constant more damage throughput compared to a burst setting but this burst setting might have helped you get a kill or put pressure on them when they're engaging on you so either one works i tend to go endless nades unless i specifically need this for clear personally but obviously um yeah do whatever you want so all right Good game to review, guys. Chin up. I think you got this. Have a good night.